Adele Dimension 4700. These systems are from around 2005 or so, and were generally sold to homes and maybe small businesses. This one has its Pentium 4 with hyper-threading, clocked at 3 GHz, and running Windows XP, in this case, Media Center Edition 2005. Now the first thing we need to do to be able to run 64-bit OS's is flash the BIOS to the latest A10 version. Once the BIOS is updated, we're able to put in our Intel Pentium 4 630 at 3 GHz with 64-bit support. This is still 90 nanometers. Due to the Intel 915 chipset, well, unfortunately we don't have access to the slightly more power efficient Pentium 4s that run on the 65 nanometer process. And as such, our power usage is very high. With this one consuming just about 180 watts at idle. Opening up the PC case, we can see what's inside. It has a very overkill cooling system, which is pretty much necessary for how hot these systems run. It has a row of what appear to be high quality electrolytic capacitors and MOSFETs. And no, I don't mean that MOSFET. In typical Dell fashion, it uses an SMSC BIOS chip, has a bloated capacitor ne next to the CPU, but just one and has the optional power connector that would give you more SATA connectors or something. I've never actually seen one in person, so I don't know what exactly is on it. It also has the proprietary Dell fan connector. The system uses DDR2 memory, and in this computer we have 4 gigabytes installed, running at 533 megahertz. It does not support running higher because of the chipset limitation that limits the RAM speed to 533 megahertz, which is sort of stupid because the bus speed is 800 megahertz. Coincidentally, our RAM can't run faster than 533 megahertz anyway because of that ATAC DIMM. For expansion slots, there's two PCI Express slots, one 16 link and one is single link. In the 16 link slot we have a ATI Radeon X300 which is a complete piece of garbage. There's also this generic looking firewire card that took a lot of effort to get out of the case because it was literally stuck in there. And it seems like it's missing a port but it has everything that you'd need for that port which is odd. This PC also has an Intel branded modem for dial up capability and I've never seen a, a modem with Intel branding before. We're running Windows 8.0 and not 8.1 because Microsoft decided that they were going to stick it to certain 64-bit processors running the 64-bit variant of the operating system, so therefore we're left on unpatched 8.0. Although you can install the Server 2012 R1 updates on this if you're inclined. The first thing we'll look at is web browsing. Twitter seems to work pretty well. Although Twitter is definitely not an intense website by any means these days. I was able to like and retweet things without much of an issue, with the main bottleneck being, as usual, my internet. I did notice that Twitter behaved strangely when I tried to like and retweet this tweet saying that it was deleted, but Twitter does that all the time. And onto YouTube. YouTube videos are actually surprisingly playable, probably thanks to the GPU and Firefox supporting the GPU and able to use hardware acceleration because YouTube likes to use hard hardware acceleration with the new HTML5 player. I was actually able to play back HD video without much of an issue. The CPU usage was pretty high, higher than I would like, but it works without much stutter. And then there's Discord, which is a crazy heavy site. However, it does seem to work reasonably all right. I'm using Firefox Quantum here, Chrome browsers do indeed work, however, with such an old potato GPU, they have absolutely no hardware acceleration that works, 
so you're going to see decreased performance wherever that would be utilized in, say, Firefox. As for local video playback, it runs very smoothly with not really extreme CPU usage. It's high at times, but then at other times it's actually only using about half of it, which isn't really that bad. I wonder if installing the K-Lite codec pack would give me better performance, but this is good enough. Firing up my typical video editor, Serif Movie Plus X6, I actually am able to edit HD video just fine. But that's sort of to be expected considering the way that it does it, it creates proxy files for these videos on slower systems, which allow you to edit HD video, but it's not playing back in the preview in HD. It's using a lower resolution, which is a pretty creative solution, and I believe Windows Movie Maker does that as well. It did take a bit to write the proxy files, but it wasn't that crazy long like when I tried on a Pentium 3. As you'd expect for an older computer, it is perfect for editing Office documents. And my typical Office suite, LibreOffice, runs just fine. And since this is Windows 8, you should be able to run most any new programs because of how recent the kernel is. I mean, 8.1 adds maybe a few functions in the kernel as far as I know. But I haven't met any software that actually runs on 8.1 and doesn't run on 8.0, so you should be good there. Now for gaming, I ran into a problem with just how much of a potato this GPU that came in the system is. So I needed to swap that out because this one only supports DirectX 9 and doesn't have much in terms of VRAM, only 128 megabytes, I think. So basically everything crashed. I decided that the NVIDIA GeForce GT710 would be a good match because it's fairly low power, but it does support DirectX 10 and 11. However, the 710 is pretty much a piece of garbage these days except for very basic things like multi-monitor support and basic hardware acceleration. Here's the results of the games running on this system on top of my horrible gameplay.
With how well Windows 8 runs on this computer, I figured I might as well just leave it on here as its main operating system.